Hello and welcome to part three on this video on series circuits by Adrian Davey from Pure Electrical Training. In the first part of this video, I showed you why you need to understand resistors in series and how it ties into your working world on site as an electrician. I also showed you how to identify test method one and test method two when carrying out inspection and testing as there is a clear link between knowledge and understanding. If you understand the knowledge, then you stand a better chance at remembering that knowledge and dealing with any scenario put in front of you. In the second part of this video, I showed you how to find RT, IT and VT and how to calculate individual voltage drops over each resistor. In the final part of this video on series circuits, we will now learn what to do if there appears to be no possible way of calculating the current total or IT using resistance and voltage total and how we can still find the current total using the voltage drop over a resistor. By the end of this lesson, you must know that you can apply Ohm's law to any part of the circuit to find the unknown quantity. You should know that the current flowing in a series circuit is constant and as such I will refer to the current total or IT and that is the key to unlocking all the other values within the circuit. Some of you could be able to identify all voltage, current and resistance values within the question and be able to draw out a circuit as shown in this video series. These were our rules for series circuits in the second video and I suggest that you write them down on your formula sheet as it will make a huge difference in the exams. I now want to bring in a fourth rule which we'll be using in this video. How you can still find the IT using any resistor and the given voltage drop across that resistor. This was the example that I gave at the end of the second video. Hopefully you've had a go at this example and we can now go for it together and you can check your method and calculations. If we pull out the information we were given, you can see that we do not have the voltage or current total for the circuit, but we do have the RT which is found by simply adding 7 ohms, 21 ohms and 28 ohms together and equals a total resistance of 56 ohms. You should know by now that we always need two values for the ohm or triangle to be able to find the third. If you look closely, we may not have been given the voltage total, but we have been given the voltage drop over resistor 3, which is 54.88 volts. Using the Ohm's law triangle for voltage drop free over resistance free, we can still find the current total within the circuit, which is the key to unlocking the rest of the question. Remember that the reason the current total is the key to series circuits is that the electrons traveling in a series circuit are like cars on a road. Because there are no branches, junctions or other routes to take, their only choice is to stay on this road. Never forget that if we are using totals from VT, RT or IT, we are finding the third unknown total within the circuit, and this is represented by the T in the subscript. This is very important to remember because if you are using two totals in the Ohm's law triangle, you are calculating the third. In this example, we are using parts of the total voltage and the res total resistance to calculate the current total. And because current always remains the same in a series circuit, we can leave this here and just swap out the remaining resistance or voltage values as I will demonstrate next. Let's put the resistor free values into the Ohm's law triangle. If we divide the voltage drop free by resistor free, this gives us the current total of 1.96 amps, which remains the same throughout the circuit, and we can transfer that to our diagram. From now on, we can leave the IT value of 1.96 amps in our Ohm's law triangle, and to calculate our voltages, we can simply transfer each resistance over. If we use current total and resistance total together, we are calculating voltage total. And our voltage total would be 109.76 volts, which we can now put here. If we move the R1 value to the Ohm's law triangle, we can use this within the current total to calculate V1, which gives us a voltage drop of 13.72 volts. We can now transfer voltage drop 1 above resistor 1 and bring down the resistor 2 value to calculate voltage drop 2. Because the current total within the series circuit stays the same, we can use it with the other resistor values to calculate the voltage drop across the last resistor. Which gives us a voltage drop of 41.16 volts. As you can see, the current total is the key to unlocking all the voltage drops across each resistor. 
Finally, we can then check our calculations are correct by adding up our individual voltage drops and checking this against the voltage total. 13.72 volts plus 41.66 volts plus 54.88 volts equals 109.76 volts. So, a quick recap. Each resistor has a voltage drop across it. All the voltage drops add up to the voltage total, proving Kirchhoff's second law. And current in a series circuit stays the same, as there are no other paths for it to take, so once you have the current total, you can apply it to every part of the circuit. Here is a quick screenshot of the method to use for your formula sheets to aid you with your exam revision. For those of you who fill up to the challenge, please have a go at this practice question. And when you come to, to complete the design project, you will be expected to know that there is a maximum voltage drop for lighting circuits and power circuits. Which means you allow a, a maximum of 3% for lighting circuits or 6.9 volts and 5% for power circuits, which is 11.5 volts. Well, that's it for the final part of this video, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it. In the next video, I will take you through resistors in parallel. You will learn that the voltage stays the same in a parallel circuit, and now it's the current that changes. And finally, please don't forget that these videos can count towards your off-the-job training for your apprenticeship or just for your own CPD. And please ensure that you like, share and subscribe so that everyone can benefit from this content. Thank you and take care.